Hello there, and welcome to Success as a Student, a skills podcast for students and anyone who wants to develop key skills that will help them in being successful. My name is Alexander Wood. I create online skills content for the University of Derby. Outside of work, I'm a trustee, a chairperson of a youth group, and the University of Derby Graduate of the Year. In this series, we focus on how you can develop skills that will help you to succeed in your university study, your career, and in your personal development, all by interviewing experienced University of Derby staff and successful students. And in today's episode, we discuss how you can take opportunities and learn to be bold. If I had to save one piece of advice for being successful, it would be to take as many opportunities as you can. And when asking the expert members of staff that I've interviewed for this series about their advice for being successful, learning to find and take the opportunities that come your way has been a very consistent theme. So, today I'm going to be interviewing the staff member who inspired me to get involved and to take the opportunities that came my way, and that is Sue Jennings. So hello Sue and welcome to the Success as a Student podcast. Uh, Would you like to briefly introduce yourself to the audience who are listening today? Hi Alex, yes, I'm Sue Jennings. I'm the head of the law school here at the University of Derby. Yeah, thanks Sue. I really appreciate you, especially because of you being so busy spending some time today being interviewed. When I was an undergraduate student, you were the head of the law school for me and I feel like I really benefited from a lot of the opportunities that you created and how you just back students and I think a lot of that comes down to your skill of being bold in both creating opportunities and being willing to stand out from the crowd. Um, I think the skill of being bold is something that's really important to students and anyone who wants to be successful. So when I talk about being bold, what do you think I mean by this? Well, th- thanks, thanks, Alex. Um, being bold for me is about a person finding their voice and being confident to use their voice Mm. and to discover how using their voice can actually create opportunities for them. Um, So I I I think for me, that's what being bold is. It is about having a voice and not just having a voice, but being confident in using it. Definitely. It's, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I think we were talking in an episode about problem solving uh, a few episodes back and when we mentioned being bold it's it we mentioned it in light of that exact thing so having come up with a solution but actually then thinking actually I'll do the solution I'll have the confidence to say the solution and try it out Um, and yeah I think it's a really really important skill for anyone listening today so how do you think the skill of being bold could help people who are listening? The, the the skill of being bold is is yes, it's about using your voice. But in t- why why would you do that? You know, how do you find the confidence to do that, and what are you going to benefit from in doing that? It, 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 it's it's about being able to um, realize your potential, and it's about being able to discover what opportunities are out there and what those opportunities would lead to. So. For me, talking to students who are listening to this or anybody who's planning to become a student, it, it's 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 about um, discovering what's out there. And I think unless unless you take that step and unless you be brave um, and create opportunities or take opportunities or find opportunities, you'll never really discover what you're passionate about or what you're capable of doing. Mm. Um, and it's also about understanding that by taking an opportunity, um, that will often open a door that you probably didn't even know was there Definitely. and can lead on to other things. Um, and so being bold is not just about gaining an advantage or an opportunity in the moment. It's about it opening up opportunities for the future that perhaps you didn't know existed. Definitely. The amount of opportunities I've gained that I didn't know existed from just trying to be bold is huge. And it's like it prepares you to get to the next step, I think. Um, Something that I'd like to talk about later in the episode is how boldness relates to taking opportunities and therefore increasing your CV and making you more employable. Um, But I'm just interested to discuss boldness just in general as a student in class. So 
in a classroom setting, how can being bold help a student? So let's say they try and answer a question, for example, in a class, and they've got an answer, but they might not want to say it. How can being bold help them there? Yeah, so being bold in, in a classroom situation, yeah, it, it's about, again, it's finding your voice and it's, it's, it's learning to not be afraid of failing. It's learning to not be afraid of looking stupid, I guess, in front of your peers. Um, and I, I would encourage students to be bold in those kind of situations um, in order to um, develop your own understanding, you you will never ever um, develop yourself if if you don't put yourself out there. Mm. Um, and you will learn. You know, you ask a question, and you perhaps ask it in a way that the the, the lecturer doesn't understand what you mean. Um, and the the lecturer might ask you another question to try and understand what you mean. And in, just in 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 having asked the question in the first place, you've then learned the skill of how to frame a question properly. Um, and you you will always learn something from from using your voice, I would say, and, and be and being bold. And you will often find that you're asking the question that everybody else is thinking but doesn't dare to ask. And so, I I think it's important to. To, to be that person, um, to, to be that person that is, is is brave enough to to ask when others perhaps are feeling tired or are feeling less confident that day, um, be be that be that person who 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 asks not just for yourself but for others too. I definitely know that when I started as an undergraduate student, I was terrified answering a question. I was so nervous every time yeah. I did it, and yeah. you often get so much out of it. Um, I know there's a phrase that I've heard quite a lot, actually, about asking questions, which is about um, there's no such thing as a stupid question. But um, asking questions and answering questions as well can be crucial. So let's say you don't understand something and you don't take the opportunity to ask the question. Later on in your exam, you might not understand that thing. That's right. That's right. Even yeah. worse, if you're, for example, expected to understand something in your first year and you don't ask the question, don't understand that, and then the same topic comes up in your third year and there's the expectation from your lecturer that you already know this stuff and you it, the, you feel might feel more pressure to then say actually I don't know how to do this that's right and the, the the other the other reason to be bold in class and to ask questions or to um you know make a statement or make a comment is that it can also it helps the lecturer to understand what the class's understanding is hmm. and what the class is interested in and what your take is and how you're actually receiving what the lecturer is delivering to you. So it's also an opportunity for you to um, be involved in the creation of, of, of how, how the class is going to be delivered for the rest of that session. Because mm -hmm. um, as, as lecturers, we, we are really tuned into and um, into what feedback we get from students to help us to be able to make our delivery of, of, of the learning and teaching experience better. So just in asking one question, you can do so many things. You can kind of encourage other people to ask questions. Um, you can broaden your own understanding. Um, you can help to make that learning experience um, better um, for you. And like you say, going forwards then um, in, into your assessments and in exams and in future classes, um, it, it, it helps you to really um, cement your your understanding. Um, students often um, often say that they want more feedback, um, and the way to get more feedback um, is to create opportunities for feedback for yourself. Is by getting involved in class and and saying things and asking questions, and in, in doing that, you will get naturally receive more feedback. Links to something that Melanie Pope mentioned in this growth mindset episode part two, where she mentioned about how you should make as many opportunities as you can to getting feedback, including answering a question in the class. Because if you get it wrong, you've you know for the exam, and that way you've got yourself exactly. feedback in advance. So yeah, boldness both in a classroom setting is really important, but it's also important as you mentioned earlier in taking and making opportunities for yourself. So. That's what I'd like to discuss now in this part of the uh, podcast is all about that. And I think 
something that you mentioned earlier about having the confidence to ask questions and opening doors it actually relates to a conversation we had about three years ago now when I asked you about a scheme that I was interested in running at the university and you backed me on that and I never realised how many doors that would open up. The scheme looked nothing like what I actually asked you in the first place. It was, I think I asked you about um, running a scheme where we could have employers come into the law school to give talks about skills, whereas instead it turned out to be students talking about their skills that they've gained experience in to other students. And that went really well, but it only happened because we, I was brave and asked that initial question and then you were brave and saying, yeah, do it. <laughs> Yes, I remember. I remember the moment, Alex. I remember you asking. I remember you asking. And I remember taking a chance yeah. on you and, and and agreeing to it. So yes, it was about both of us being being bold in that moment. Um and I'm absolutely I was absolutely thrilled with what followed because I think that you took that opportunity, that you know, it gave you the confidence to take that opportunity. Um, and make it into something which benefited not only yourself, but uh, a lot of other students as well. And has obviously led on to other things for you. Mm, definitely. It's amazing, that opportunity. And just that one moment of being bold can lead to things. And that's just a lot of what I think taking opportunities is. You don't understand, realise how taking one opportunity can lead to 10 more. That's right. That's right. And I think also, from, from my recollection of, of, of how all that came about, um, and, and this is a piece of advice that I would give to, to, to students, is, is to listen. Um, because I remember um, standing in front of, of your year and in, in saying to you all that um, I was open to ideas I wanted you all to own your year in law school and to and to, to come forward and, and be brave and talk to me if you'd got any ideas on what you would like to do or where you think we could um, enhance your experience as students. Um, and you obviously listened to that and then took that, you know, then had an idea, uh, had an idea um, and was brave enough to come and, and talk to me. And I remember you coming to talk to me at the end of one class um, one day um and, and asking that question but it was about it's about listening um, so you you listened to what I said and then I listened to what you said and then you probably listened back to me as to what kind of steer or ideas I gave you in response to what, what it was that you wanted to do and so I think being bold and being I guess being successful with being bold is not just about finding your own voice but it's also about listening mm. There's also another element to that that I've just realised you've, no, you've mentioned there, which is about spotting opportunities. So some opportunities come to you on a plate. Some will say, hi, do you want to get involved with this scheme? So you might get invited to get involved in the scheme or to take part in an opportunity or to join a competition, for example. There are opportunities that present themselves to you, but other opportunities, they are more subtle. So then you mentioned, oh, does someone want to come forward and have an idea to, to own your year? And you can see that as an opportunity, but you can actually have to take it and almost make it so it's a more subtle opportunity that comes your way. And a lot of opportunities are like that, aren't they? They are. They are, absolutely. And and I think it is about, um, in those situations, it, it, it is one about listening, but then it's also about being creative and reflective. I think being bold, you know, being bold is sounds like you've got to be really super confident and really brave all the time. But sometimes it's 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 about being reflective. You, sometimes bold is in the moment, and you 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 know like putting your hands up in a class. That's kind of being bold in the moment. But sometimes being bold requires planning and preparation mm. um, and reflection and and kind of building up to being bold. Um, and 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 sometimes that planning and that preparation having heard that there's a gap or discovered that there's a gap that you've got an idea to fill it's then in order for your boldness to be successful it's about kind of planning well how how, how are you going to how are you going to approach this situation how are you going to what how are you going to formulate your idea what moment are you going to choose to raise your idea who are you going to raise it with mm. so I think bold success in being bold sometimes involves preparation Sometimes it involves spontaneity. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a lot of planning that goes into things, especially how you first deliver an idea, because the first time you deliver that, it's the first impression. 
if you come across badly, people might reject it. So there has to be planning in if you are going to take an opportunity or make one, proposing that opportunity to other people. Um, definitely. Same with a job interview as well. You have to plan and prepare that, although it's a bit different because you don't have to choose when you get told when and you have to do an application. But it's very similar. You have to plan and prepare and give yourself the time to actually make it work. Definitely, definitely. And it is it is understanding boldness um, can can happen yeah, in both sponta- in spontaneous situations, but also sometimes it needs planning. And and, and there, there isn't one definition of bold boldness. Yeah. Um, and it's it's developing those skills um, and the confidence to be bold both spontaneously and through planning. There's another element to being bold as well, or not just that, but taking opportunities, which is planning ahead that so that you're ready to take the opportunity that comes because you never know when a doorway is going to open or when that's going to happen, when you're going to have the ability to do something good. But having the time then to actually do it is really important. Um, so, for example, if I'd come up with this great idea in that moment, but I had already planned my time and filled my time completely when I came up with that idea, I couldn't have actually done it because I would have had to say, okay, well, next year maybe, and that time, that opportunity might have gone by then. So it's about being open. That's almost. right. Yes, and I think as students, one one huge skill that you have to develop is how to prioritize your time, um, not only on a day to day basis and on a weekly basis, but recognizing that um, your your semesters are really really are quite short aren't they um and th- there's a lot to cram in there mm. and I think that um it, it depends on your personality some people live in the moment um and um pull things off at the last minute um some people have to have everything planned within an inch of their life and have you know planners on the wall and on their phones and um and, and plan out their, their their day and their week um but, you, but you're right, um, you, in order to be able to take opportunities that you weren't expecting that come your way, you, you do have to have space. Um, and I, and I, I think the advice I would give to students um, is to, is you have to be able to constantly prioritize and reprioritize um, what's most important now. Mm. Um, and what's important long term, you almost have to have kind of your your immediate and your medium and your long term priorities. And you need to be able to assess very quickly whether an opportunity that comes your way can be fitted into all of that without um, without damaging any of your 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 absolute priorities. You know, they might be a whole range of things. It might be um, assignment deadlines. You know, assignment deadlines are an absolute. You've got a deadline. It's got to be handed in on that day. You want to do your best. You might have family commitments. Um, you might have working commitments. Um, you need the money to to, to, to do your studies and to, to live. And it, that there's a huge skill involved in, in, in juggling all of those competing priorities to enable you to take opportunities yeah um and and that's something that um i think that students i would really encourage students to do as as at an early as opportunity as possible is to try and plan ahead so that you create space for these unknown opportunities don't leave everything to the last minute i guess that's Easier said than done, I know, because we, we all do that sometimes. Mm. Um, um, but if you want to be able to take up opportunities um, that you don't know are coming your way, you have to find a way of creating some space. So we talk about the skill of organisation in another podcast episode, um, which is called, called Organisation, where I discuss with Caroline Ball how there's different ways of organising depending on different personalities. Mm. Um and that's definitely worth a listen to if you are struggling with that skill of organisation. Another thing that relates to what you were saying about uh, taking opportunities is about planning quite far ahead. So you talked about the long term things. Often students might think the long term is my assessment deadline. I would probably argue that's medium and short term are like your tutorials and your lectures. But longer term, your career. If you go to uh, go to a job interview and you know in three years time I'm going for a job interview, how in those three years can you take opportunities that will get you to be 
in the best position possible then. Um, that's something which I advise. I don't know if you've got anything you want to talk about related to that, Sue. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I I, th- I think that students, I think, need to sit down, and, yes, and work out what they view as their long-term priorities and what are their medium-term and what are their short-term and then work out how they're going to create the space to do all of that. Um, because if you if you don't, you could end up just um, just coming out with a degree. Yeah. And, and 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 that's amazing. And depending on what's happening in your personal life, achieving your degree might be your long term aim. That 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 might just be what it is because of everything else that's going on in your life. Um, but if you have got the space, if you organise yourself well enough. Um, your long-term opportun- your long-term goals, you know, should hopefully be around your career. And whilst you're at the university, the array of opportunities is just astounding. It- it's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, not only in terms of opportunities that are created for you, but also that opportunity to create your own opportunities mm-hmm. and the, you know, the encouragement that's there at, at university um, and the you know the role models that are there um, for you to go to and and, and, and your access to um, you know your, your peers as well you're surrounded by all these different people and um, and projects and it's like this whole bubble of, of creativity around you. Um, that it, it's the time to take as many opportunities as possible with that long-term aim, mm. and also not just not just because you you know. So we're talking. You know, I'm from the law school, so lots of students decide they want to go into law and be a lawyer, um, and they 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 start off their degree um, thinking that that's what they want to do. But what I would encourage students to do is to take as many opportunities as possible to discover if that is actually what you want to do Mm. to make sure, because it might be that that isn't right for you and that there might be something else that's going to fulfill your life in a far greater way and, and and have far more success for you. But if if you don't take opportunities, you won't ever discover that about yourself or discover what's out there. And so I, I, I see your, I see like taking opportunities as, as not just about you building cv to a particular end it might be but it also might be about a journey you know journey of discovery for you (laughs) i definitely agree with that actually so um i was 100 sure when i started at law school that i wanted to be a lawyer so the first thing i did actually linking back to what you said previously is i said okay i want to be a lawyer how do i stand out well i want to get the best degree possible so i'm going to try and get the best score i can possibly do because law school is busy i have lots on Let's get the best score possible. Um, and I actually got lucky. I finished the year with the highest grades in my year. I went to a lawyer saying, look at me, I've got the highest grades. Employ me, please give me opportunities. And they basically turned around and said, yeah, lots of people do well, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I realized that basically I needed to get myself out there to make myself stand out more. And that your degree is not going to give you necessarily, it's not. it's only going to give you the same skills everyone else who's going to, for a law job will so how do you stand out so uh, yes. that's when I started actually getting involved and taking opportunities and that's when I started assessing actually the need to do more than just study to stand out and properly make myself as competitive as possible um the second thing in that is that um having then done that I realized that maybe law isn't for me so I had some I did six months worth of work experience which was really fun in a criminal law firm and that was actually really enjoyable, but there was a lot of stress there. And the experiences I got in law, they seemed to not reflect the creativity that I like. And then I started doing other things. So I started doing teaching students and things like that. And actually, I enjoyed the creativity and making new ideas and opportunities. And I found that that path was where I stood stronger than actually doing law. So I, through experiencing what it's like to be in a law firm and doing other things, realized that maybe another path is best for me and that's why I would recommend doing that you might find this is the best thing this is where I want to be for the rest of my life you might find that that's maybe right. other things are so yeah. how do you how do you find that through experience definitely definitely and I think it I think 
it's also about stepping outside of your comfort zone of what you think you know about yourself um, and trying out different things. And for example, for me, I, I discover, I've discovered through all the different things that I've done that, um, yes, I, I can stand here and speak, but advocacy is not something that I enjoy as much, whereas negotiation and persuasion um, and advocacy in that respect is where my strengths lie. And I would never have known that unless I'd tried lots of different opportunities throughout my life, um, that, that, that that was where my strength lay. I think I think you discovered that you you can be everything, but you you won't naturally excel at everything, mm. if if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and and through through taking up opportunities, you do discover where your strengths lie, and you can then work on the the, the weaknesses to enable you to get where you want to get. But but you know you will ultimately discover where your real strengths lie, and then you can then. Um, learn how to build on that and, and how to uh, how to create success for, for yourself and for others um, from that. It's actually really interesting you saying about advocacy and negotiation because when I started university I saw myself as being an advocate someone who could stand up and do court things and by advocate basically what we mean is people who stand up in court and make arguments and actually I really struggled I struggled a lot more than I would have thought with that skill. And when I started negotiation, I thought I would really struggle. I was actually so afraid of the negotiation assessment. I thought this is the one where I'm definitely going to fail. And I was sure I wasn't going to do very well. Actually, that turns out to be the skill I was best at out of all of them. Yes, yeah. And I would say that's because you're a really creative person. And you, you, you. what you've discovered is that... Um, that you're through through the different opportunities that you've taken and the different projects you've got involved in, you've discovered that you're very creative, and so you you excel better a bit more free form, whereas um, advocacy requires lots of rules, um, and and you have to be able to think on your feet in the moment. But what you, how how you present your case is very structured. Yeah. So a lot of what we've been saying here then is about how actually by taking opportunities and by trying your best and being put yourself out there and take the opportunities that work for you, you can discover where your strengths lie and actually what, who you are. And that is really important for students, both in their future Absolutely. planning and elsewhere. So there's two other elements to taking opportunities that I'd like to talk about in this podcast. First of all, I'd like to talk about the barriers to taking opportunities. Now talk about how you actually evaluate and choose which opportunity is best for you at a given time. So in terms of taking opportunities, are there any barriers that students might find? I imagine the biggest barrier will be their confidence in themselves. Um, I imagine that time um, is, is, is a barrier that students think is there. It'll be different for other, different people. For some people, that time might be um, due to their home situation. Um, it might be due to um, their financial circumstances. So I, I think I think students need to be realistic as to how many opportunities they can take on. So again, it's about it's about learning to prioritize. Um, it's learning to take the opportunities that you're, are going to give you the maximum benefit. So not saying yes to everything, but really evaluating what it is that you're going to get out of an opportunity um, and how it's going to benefit you um, and perhaps being quite uh, perhaps seeking help with looking with the, from careers or from from your from your personal academic tutor or from 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 another perfect from a professional in, in in the area that you want to go into and say what is it do you think that's missing from my CV what what do you think that's missing from my experience or what do you think is going to help me get a better degree and 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 making sure that the opportunities that you take um, are going to actually deliver the success that 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 you need and the, the to, to deliver what what you need. Um, so I, I think that those 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 barriers um, often are created by ourselves, 
I, th- I think often we put barriers in our, our own way. And I think it's then about problem solving around those barriers and not thinking that that doesn't mean that you can't take these opportunities, but you've got to make the opportunities work for you in your situation. Yeah, and definitely yeah. worth identifying what barriers you might have and trying to problem solve and how to get through them. Something you mentioned mm-hmm. then just was about time in terms of how many opportunities you can fit in and about being realistic. I definitely felt that that was something that I struggled with. So I mentioned how I was playing catch up because I started do- taking opportunities in my second year rather than my first year. I took on way too much in an unbalanced way. And so almost everything I did came up at the same time and actually meant that I didn't do well in some of my assessments in my second year. I did I did better overall for taking opportunities, definitely, because I learned skills out with other things. But some assessments I had too much on in one time. So learning the time management skills to manage those time to manage those opportunities properly and also make sure I benefit my degree, I think was really important. Yes, I, I think talk, talking to other people can help. If, 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 you've, if you feel, if you don't know whether taking on a particular opportunity is going to help you or not, or whether if you've taken on too much and then you don't know what to drop, I would say it's really important to talk to, talk to somebody um, and to try and process it and to try to prioritise and work out what's going to be most beneficial to you. And sometimes it can be you know, the one that you choose to keep going with. It might not necessarily be the one that's most beneficial to you in, in the short term, but in the long term it might be. And sometimes you might need help with assessing that. Yeah, um, definitely. I would 100% agree with that. There's a lot of factors that I've thought about, which I would definitely consider thinking about when you're evaluating which opportunity is best for you. Uh, before I get onto that, though, I'd just like to touch on confidence that you mentioned earlier. So you mentioned that people might struggle in terms of confidence being a barrier do you have any advice for how people could overcome that barrier yeah so the the obvious ones are just you know to believe in yourself um but that's not always that's not always an easy thing to do um i i think that you you have to ask yourself what is it that's holding you back you know try and face those try and face up to those fears so is it that you think that you won't be good enough or that somebody will say no to you or that um that somebody's not going to listen to you or think that you're you know you're you're punching way above your weight you know that you know you're not going to be capable of this i i think that you have to really um face up to what it is that's stopping you Mm -hmm. Um, and believe in yourself and know that if somebody does say no to you that it's not going to be the end of the world it doesn't mean that you can't an opportunity is not going to come up your way again Um, I think sometimes it's just taking a big deep breath and not thinking about it too much not overthinking it you know that's probably the you know in contradiction to what I've said just said but in some opportunities sometimes in some opportunities you just have to take the plunge you just have to put your hand up or just use your voice mm. and see where it takes you. Um, I, I think, I think it, it, it's kind of, it, it's both of those things. Sometimes it's about evaluating it, what's holding you back. But sometimes it really just is about just taking a big, deep breath, thinking I can do this and do it. I think that's an excellent, excellent advice there. I definitely suffered from the fear of rejection from others. Mm-hmm. That was something that always came my way and still does at times. When I was inter- asking people to be invited for this podcast, I still irrationally thought, well, what if they say no? Well, so actually, if you think about it logically, what happens if I ask someone and they say no? Well, you ask someone else. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you go for a job opportunity, what happens if they say no? Well, you go somewhere else. If you try to get interviewed or go for work experience and you ask someone and they say no, it's, you, you, it's not the end of the world. Actually, if you don't ask them, you're in the same position if they say no as if you don't ask them. That's right. That's right. If you do ask them, they may say yes. So Absolutely, yes. I think I think one 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 huge barrier is that we self-select ourselves out of situations. We never give ourselves the opportunity for somebody to say yes, yeah. because we decide that they're going to say no before we've even asked them. 
and and so you've never you have then never given yourself the opportunity and so if you don't give yourself the opportunity how is anybody else ever going to give you an opportunity it's always surprising how different people think about you compared to what you feel about yourself as well so i know that i definitely felt that as well not thinking thinking oh they'll just reject me there's no point especially when i was early in my law career thinking about getting work experience i just didn't dare i just felt i just froze up and thought they're going to say no why bother when it's just as we said absolutely just go for it take the plunge even if you're nervous we all still get nervous before we do something big i don't know about you do you still feel nervous before you ask to take a big opportunity completely always always yeah i don't think i don't think um i think it's very rare and i think anybody who tells you that they don't isn't being honest um what you have to learn to do is to channel those nerves is you have to you have to learn to channel those nerves into something creative and something positive and and use those nerves as like adrenaline to do your best that's how i've always seen it um and to, to kind of propel you forwards and to give you that energy turn 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 those nerves and those fears into energy um, that makes you come across as as, as passionate and interested. Um, that that's how that's how I've always dealt with it. I think that's an excellent point. That's ex- that's something that I actually do quite often. I actually I think of what I find myself like, what I do is I turn it into jokes. So when I'm very very nervous, I make a lot of jokes. Um, whereas when I'm more calm, I don't. That's how I channel my nerves and how I want to deal with it. But we still both get nervous. And absolutely. I think I always will. And I, I, I think the day I don't get nervous is probably when I, I don't care anymore, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, I always care about what I do and wanting to be the best and wanting to, uh, that, that I can be. Um, and I think that's, that's another important point about being bold and, and being confident or facing the barrier of, of lack of confidence of being bold is, is to trust in who you are and don't try to be like anybody else don't 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 try and fake it um have confidence in who you are and what you have to offer um and what um opportunities you're looking for and 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 what you can bring to a situation um and and i think listening is a huge part of that enabling you to work out what you can bring to a situation but having the confidence that um what you've got to bring and who you are is good enough as opposed to being in a situation thinking i'm not going to be what they want and i'm not good enough because then that comes across that 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 negativity comes across Mm. so it's having that belief in what you've got to offer is going to be of value. I think actually that is a really, really good point. The power of positivity cannot be understated. No. It's just being positive about anything. You make opportunities happen by doing that, by approaching people, by being positive, by trying, not being afraid of failure and just going for it, taking the plunge, all really important skills and being bold and also therefore taking the opportunities that come your way. So the last thing I'd like to talk about in relation to taking opportunities is how you evaluate the opportunities that come your way. So we've discussed this a little bit already, um, but have you got any advice for how people decide which opportunities to take and which ones not to take? Yeah. So I think it's really important to identify a number of things. So first of all, your goals. And I think you need to think of them in terms of immediate, so short-term immediate goals your medium goals and your long-term goals. I think think that's really, really important. I think you need to reflect on what it is that you're good at um, or what you think you're good at. Um, Reflect on the things that you find difficult. And I think it's important to take opportunities that can develop both of those sides of things. Um, So it's planning planning as to what you want to get out of opportunities. I think it's important that sometimes opportunities come your way and you you haven't done that planning. You haven't had that time to think about what it is 
that you're going to that, that you need to get out of an opportunity sometimes I think you do just have to take a chance on it mm. and take an opportunity but when you've taken that opportunity in that bit of, in in that opportunity reflect on am I getting something out of this can I give something to it and if it isn't figure out whether you want to continue it or not whether it, whether you should would be better walking away or whether walking away will let people down or whether it's going to let you down and whether there's a way in which if, if, if you need to walk away but you're worried you're going to let somebody down figure out the most effective way of walking away that that, that isn't going to let somebody down yeah I think a lot of that is important, especially in relation to the uh, last part about walking away from opportunities. Something that I probably struggle with is the fear of saying no to people, for one. But also, if you've said yes to someone and it's not helpful to you and it's almost a burden on your time or it's taking up too much time for what it's worth, how you can either reduce that down in time or just say no to it. But it's the same skill applies to boldness, doesn't it? You've just got to be willing oh. to... Yeah. Definitely. And I think in, in, in saying, in, in deciding not to see through a commitment, you have to think through what the consequences of saying no will be. Because sometimes saying no won't have any impact on an opportunity because it's not going to really let somebody down. But they can probably find somebody else to step in and do it. But if the consequence of you walking away is going to be damaging to to a project or damaging to you in terms of a reference that you might be seeking in the future from that person whose project you were on um that that might be a reason to say well I'm, i i don't want to do this but i am going to have to see it through now and learn the lesson as to uh, whether you should have said yes in the first place yeah but a lot of it comes from reflection and learning so i know with my opportunities that i took in my second year I said about how I took a lot of that happened at the same time. That was a huge mistake. I wish I said no to some of those things. But also, they were really good experiences that I took part in at the time where I was completely overloaded. In my third year, I actually took on more things, but the only difference was is because of that reflection, I spaced them out. So when I was evaluating whether to take opportunities or not, a lot of that I negotiated to make sure that they fitted in when I was free. So I made it so I wasn't doing much around assignment times when I was like having to actually write things. And I yes. made sure I was doing what's in the summer when I was free. Yes. Yeah. I, I think sometimes you, you, you know, you're not going to get it right when you, as a student, when you first start out taking opportunities, um, you, you're not going to get it right. And, and part of taking opportunities is about um, learning the best way of taking opportunities. So what you've described, Alex, is you through, through taking on too much you've actually created an opportunity for yourself to learn how to properly prioritize mm. and how to make opportunities work for you. So in a way, it was it was still an opportunity, if that makes sense. It was good. I'm glad I did it. But also, it really it was a really bad few weeks when I did that. But then yeah. that's then meant that now I'll do what I can to avoid doing that. So I from that mistake or that failure, um, I learn to use start using a calendar system and a new way of evaluating opportunities that I hadn't really thought of before. The, when I was evaluating them the first time, I thought, will this help me in the future? Yes or no? Okay, I'll do it. Oh, and the yes. second aspect actually is, am I doing something at the same time? That was the only two things I really considered, whereas now I consider how much time it's going to take, will I make any connections, will I help people out, will it enhance my CV in any way in the future? um there, there's a lot of selfish things that i think about there but there's also the is it for the good and is it helping a good cause and things like that to add to as well that's right and i, and I also think that it, it, it's it's got to be something that you're passionate about and interested in as well because you always it's amazing they always there's this saying isn't there you know ask a busy person um and it's amazing how, if you're passionate about something, how your mind seems to be able to create the space to do things if, you re if you're really passionate about it. And it's kind of, you, I don't think you'll, you'll learn that about yourself if, if, if you never take opportunities. And if you, if you aren't confident and you aren't brave, don't take a deep breath and, and, and do it and try, you, you will never learn that. Definitely. I think... Um... 
I think the busy person analogy is actually really true, but I think a lot of that comes down to prioritization. So it's just in the mind, how do you prioritize things? And if you rate it highly, you can push other things aside a little bit if you can do them and you'll make the space naturally. Um, but then another part of that goes into the fact that you've planned to have the space where you can put it in or you have got your plan movable things that you can move out of the way for opportunities like that, which is something that I try and do as much as I can do. I think it's also about um, um, recognising as well when you need to do things perfectly and what things that you don't need to do perfectly and what, what what's enough. Mm. I think that's an important part of learning how to prioritise. I actually agree with that. Something that I try and do with this podcast series is, I don't know if I should be admitting this, but I'm going to, is I try to make everything to a very good standard rather than an excellent standard so that I can make sure I can get more of the episodes out to get more of the Absolutely. positive messages. Yeah, because your priority is to get this podcast out as yeah. opposed to every single thing about it being absolutely perfect, which might then actually mean that it never gets out. Definitely. If I was to make it perfect, I might reshoot interviews because there was one sentence which was cut out by a bit of audio, for example, or the audio cut out or those lag. But that's that the impact of that being fixed to the proportion of me fixing it is not worth it. And yeah. the same goes for a lot of things as a student in terms of making things perfect and something I definitely advise. So something that I would like to add is that when I was a student, taking opportunities came down to one decision for me. So it came actually beyond hours. It was when I decided to become a student representative or to stand to be a student representative. I uh, missed the deadline for it, actually. And I, and I asked um, one of my lecturers, Christy Eaton, the, a few hours beforehand, could I do it? I decided, let's go for this. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why I did it. I actually had already said I couldn't do that. In my first year, I'd said I couldn't be a student representative because people wouldn't vote for me. And then in my second year, something clicked and there was a gut moment where I took the plunge and I did it. And that led on to other opportunities that allowed me to be successful and become, I guess, who I am today. So the thing that I'd like to add is if there's one, often it can come down to one decision that can really push you on the right track. And don't be afraid of taking the plunge when that comes your way. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Alex. I, I, I think that, you know, being bold, taking opportunities, it is about just taking a deep breath and going for it sometimes in the moment. Mm. Definitely. In that moment. Become... In that moment. Yeah, yeah. be in that, in that moment. Take, that, take a leap of faith in that moment. Um, and you might not know where it's going to lead you. Um, you know, all the planning in the world, all the preparation in the world um, um, doesn't help you in those moments. It's just about this gut instinct of, of being brave, um, believing in yourself and being prepared to take what comes next. Mm -hmm whether it be a no, whether it be failure, whether it be a new opportunity, whether it be the best thing that you ever did, you won't know. You no. won't know no. until you've taken that step. And it might take lots of different steps before you get to that moment where it is the step that opens the door for you. And but you have to just keep taking those steps. And often, even if it is the wrong step that you've taken, you might find that out. So I know with job applications, I went for jobs, I put my heart and soul into it, I got rejected, but that they rejected me because I wasn't right for that job. And that rejection actually led me to where I am now, so actually that's completely fine. And and just keep getting back up, and, and every knock that you receive, you have to just get back up. You have to get back on your feet and keep going. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You you have to do that. And if you keep doing it enough times, good will come. Definitely. So uh, the final question that I always ask at the end of these interviews is quite simple. It's what advice would you give to a student who wants to be successful? Be brave. Believe in yourself. Listen. Take opportunities. Be that person that puts yourself forwards when an opportunity comes comes your way that you feel sounds interesting, that you feel passionate about. Don't 
don't ever think that you're going to be um, you're, you're going to be in the wrong. Always, but always believe that you've got something to offer. And if somebody tells you that what you've got to offer isn't right, don't don't let that hold you back. Putting yourself forwards again. Um, success is about resilience. It's it's about um, building towards your success. I suppose that's that's the best advice I can give to you. That taking opportunities is about building towards your success, and fail, failures will be part of that. But the, the main advice I've got to give about being bold is to do, to just take a deep breath and say yes to the right opportunities. And if you're not sure whether it's the right opportunity, give it a go. I think that's excellent advice, Sue. And actually, it leads on to the next episode of the series, which is all about being resilient and being free to fail. So Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. So thank you very much for being interviewed today, Sue, and thanks for taking the time out of your day to do so. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> I really appreciate Sue being able to complete this interview with me today, as she was the person who backed me and gave me the opportunity to succeed. And she also created lots of opportunities that I was able to undertake as a student. In truth, I do wonder where I would be if... At certain points in my life, I was not bold and willing to put myself out there. And so I really do appreciate Sue giving me the opportunities to put myself out there. So this leads to the first takeaway point from this episode. That is, one moment of boldness in going for and taking an opportunity can lead to lots more. If you are successful in getting that opportunity, it can open so many doors for you. If you aren't successful though, this may also be an opportunity It may be an opportunity to reflect upon how you can do better next time, or an opportunity to find another experience that will help you even more. So don't fear the failure of trying to take an opportunity and not getting it. My second key takeaway point from this episode is that it's really important to find opportunities that are right for you. Sue recommended to learn to listen and to spot what opportunities are actually out there, and then to evaluate if they're actually right for you. If you aren't sure, then consider taking a leap of faith and trying it. Some of the best opportunities that I've taken are the ones where I had no idea what to expect and I didn't know where the opportunity could lead me. So I took a leap of faith and they've often led me to great places. As an example, last year I was privileged to meet the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, and I did this by accepting a completely blind opportunity at short notice to talk about a scheme that I was involved in as a student. I had no idea what the opportunity was, but rather than say no to it, I took a leap of faith and I went for it, and it actually was a great experience that I wouldn't have got if I hadn't been bold. So this leads nicely to my third key takeaway point from this episode. Make sure to plan your schedule so that it's flexible, so that you have time to adapt to the unknown opportunities that come your way. You don't know what could come up at short notice, and sometimes amazing things happen that if you've got a tightly packed schedule, you have to reject and you can't do. So, leave space and create flexibility where possible. If an opportunity does come up at a time when you cannot do it, but you have some time on the day or the days around that, consider if that opportunity can be negotiated. I will talk more about this later in the series when I interview the successful student Tyra Tucker. The final key takeaway point, which I actually think is one of the most important of the entire episode, is that taking opportunities can help you to find out who you are and what you actually want to do in the future. You might find by taking an opportunity that this is the thing that you want to do going forward, but you also might find that this actually isn't something you want to go into. But you can only find this out by going through that experience and by taking the opportunity. So, what are you waiting for? Go out there and get as much experience as you can to discover who you are and develop your skills. I do appreciate though that sometimes it can be difficult to get experience. I've often thought about it as you have to have experience to get experience and I initially actually struggled to get quite a bit of experience and was rejected a few times because of not having enough experience to get experience. So to get around this I actually found that I could create my own opportunities to develop the skills that I was lacking on 
this then gave me a foundation to get the opportunities that come through interviews and to also develop things that I'm passionate for and like. So to find out more about how you can develop the skills that you're weaker on through creating your own opportunities, I'd recommend watching the interview that came out last week, which is all about enterprise and networking. This episode was brought to you by the University of Derby Skills Team. Production, episode planning and editing was completed by Alexander Wood. Thanks to Stephen Plant for creating the amazing graphics and for balancing the audio of this episode. Thanks also go to Natalia Kodalavar, Tim Zalstra and Naomi Bowers-Joseph for giving feedback for this episode and the series on the whole. Thank you very much for listening.